Okay, let's get started. Uh, welcome to the Understanding Microsoft XDR webinar from Patriot. I want to give many thanks to all of you for carving out a slot in your busy day to join us in this uh, webinar about this rather exciting topic these days called uh, Extended Detection Response, or XDR. Thanks, Brian. So a quick word about Patriot, in case you don't know who we are, we're a Microsoft Elite Security Partner. We by choice, just specialize only in the Microsoft security ecosystem. That's basically what we're talking about today here. Uh, XDR, and the family of services, uh, Orbit, that whole idea, XDR. Uh, our founder, Joe Stocker, is one of the few Microsoft security MVPs in the world. And uh, we've had a lot of clients just in 2021. We had close to 200 uh, organizations uh, helped in Microsoft security. And uh, we do take a little bit of pride in our really high level of quality and uh, return rate and customer satisfaction. And a quick word about me in case you don't know me yet. I'm Jeff Border. I'm a uh, senior Azure security architect at Patriot. I'm currently leading Patriot's multi-cloud hybrid security program. I've been consulting in InfoSec and IT ops for close to 25 years now. Different public clouds for over 10, especially Azure, uh, and DevSecOps as well. I have a handful of certifications. Some of them are listed here, like from Scaled Agile Framework, which means I have a passion for getting into code and helping orgs shift left for security. I also have a few certifications from Microsoft and security, cloud security product champion from Microsoft. And finally, uh, I'm really honored to have been invited to co-author the second edition of Joe Stalker's fantastic book, Securing Microsoft 365. I hand it off to Zach. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Zach Moore. I'm one of the senior security architects at Patriot. And as part of my role, I primarily deploy the Microsoft 365 Defender products um, with a pretty heavy focus on Defender for Endpoint. Uh, as well as I lead and uh, join up with, with our CEO, Joe Stalker, on incident response and provide those services for customers as well. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how Microsoft 365 Defender plays into the Microsoft XDR solution. So looking forward to, to getting to talk with everyone about that today and thanks for, for joining us. All right, thanks Zach. All right, let's dive in. Let's get started. So let's start with an example tack chain and some typical tactics use. So on the left, we've got some phishing email that comes in here, all right? User clicks on a URL they're not supposed to click on, but they do it anyway. They browse to a website and that website installs, takes advantage of an exploit first and then installs a attacker tool. That tool might set up command and control there. And then from there, we've got some movements. For example, uh, user account might be compromised uh, from brute force or attacker attempts lateral movement across the network and might get access to say a server down here or maybe even a, a domain controller compromise that. And uh, maybe they find some sensitive data, uh, they log in as a different, uh, more privileged account and then exfiltration of data. Uh, or we might have some exfiltration of data that comes out this way. Yeah, pretty typical. Now, what we've got here usually is each one of these parts are detected by a different DR tool, right? So detection and response tools that kind of spread out across this attack chain. So for example, we might have some email monitoring, anti-phishing, et cetera, type of tools over there on the left. They give us some alerts to what's going on there. And then endpoint detection response tools might cover these endpoint type of alerts. 
And then identity and access management, IAM protection, might uh, clue us in and alert us to, you know, some of the identity anomalies that might be happening during this attack chain. And then access security broker, CASB, up in the upper right there, will alert us to some yeah, suspicious activity exfiltrating out of the org, for example. And then, uh, you know, server auditing or monitoring might detect that lateral movement to a server and uh, also see some data being accessed that uh, shouldn't be accessed there. So basically what we've got here is a pile of alert signals coming in from different sources, right? We have different tools can include on and focused on different parts of the stack chain. This is what we call kind of a portfolio problem. This is where we've got a bunch of tools that traditionally they really haven't always worked well together in the past. So we've got this portfolio of stuff that we have to kind of herd these components together to you know, maintain them, integrate them, and then the information signals that they're giving us, we have to correlate, contextualize that information. So we could really make sense of what's going on. Um, we don't want to be myopic. We don't want to just have a really good view on one part of this picture because this is a real attack chain we see these days. We don't want to spend lots of energy either piecing together this portfolio approach. Rather, we want a platform. That's what we call it. We call it a platform, and that's what XDR brings. So what is XDR? How do we define extended detection and response? Well, you know, you can put about five experts in a room these days and get four different answers. You know, they might say something like, well, it's just really EDR, but with deluxe added to it, you know, more stuff, EDR plus. Unfortunately, that's kind of myopic because as we saw in the previous example and that TATAC chain, you know, the endpoints are not really where we should focus all of our energy and all our energy in the EDR. So these days, attacks can start in various different places, such as in authentication and so forth. So that's kind of a myopic definition, you know, EDR plus. So let's see what the analysts at Gartner say. Now, in late 2021, they gave us this big giant definition, market guide for the extended detection response. But you know what? Let's break this down. Let's break this down and kind of a checklist of things to look for. Next year. So first of all, it needs to be a platform. So interesting thing here with this is that we've got a platform to start the de definition, and then we've got a portfolio to end it. Now, what's the difference? Now, in the same year, right after they issued this, they said this, vendors are increasingly divided into platform and portfolio camps, with the former integrating tools into a whole that's greater than some of its parts, and so forth. So, this is from Predicts 2022. They're kind of looking at the crystal ball and saying, hey, where are we going? This is a December 2021. So late 2021, consolidated security platforms are the future. The point here is we've got vendors are increasingly divided into two kind of architectural approaches for XDR. Okay. The better is platform. The worst is portfolio. Let's go through this a little bit more. So integrates, correlates, contextualize, multiple security components. We're taking all these different signals like we saw in the attack chain and um, really trying to make sense of that. You know, we're using advanced analytics, um, that fourth bullet there, to actually make sense of that. For example, you know, UABA, user entity uh, behavioral analytics, is just on. And it just should be on. It shouldn't be like a separate component that we have to go and care feed for, maybe run on-prem, as we know with a very popular SIM platform these days, that's what you have to do. So advanced analytics, big part of this, not just fancy graphs, not just fancy ways of doing queries, but advanced analytics. All right. Now, that third bullet there, cloud delivered. 
my gosh, that's pretty bold. I think that's pretty bold, but what they're saying here is that we just, these days, we have great cloud platforms, you know? They've been around for a while, years and years. We just, we're not at the point now that we want to waste time carrying and feeding for the infrastructure, and keeping the XDR dial tone on. That thing's got to be up all the time. We've got to be ingesting everything that we can all the time um, so that we could stay on top of these signals, incidents, and our response, okay? Reduce sprawl, alert fatigue, integration challenges, and operational expense. That's just a call out to, hey, you know, we don't want a herd of vendors that don't play well with each other, or maybe even a herd of products from one vendor that don't play well with each other, even worse, right? Uh, maybe that was a, you know, product of acquisitions your vendor did, and then they started to, uh, put them all into one package, license them that way, and said, hey, we're XDR now. Eh, not so much, right? <laughs> we don't want that kind of stuff to slow us down when attacks happen. So again, alert fatigue, it's got to cut through the noise, light up what's important. You know, we humans get desensitized to the same false positives and ignoring the positive positives. So it's got to help us with that. And finally, it's got to stop making the socks and those teams, those teams of analysts spend a lot of energy integrating ingestion, enrichment, automation, so that you can focus on what matters. So we've got to get away from this best of breed solutions, AKA portfolio. This is what XDR is. All right, so let's take a look at how this stacks up in the Microsoft security ecosystem. So Microsoft 365, over here on the left, we've got Microsoft 365 Defender. That's the family of products from Microsoft that covers Microsoft 365. You know, we've got some of that EDR for endpoints, uh, email, documents, coverage, uh, identities from identity protection, and uh, CASB, like for business applications and monitoring that type of product. These are the XDR capabilities for Microsoft 365, which SAC will show us a bit later. However, that's only part of the picture. So what do we do about this stuff over here on the right? What do we do about that parts of our IT estate? They're clearly not just, you know, Microsoft 365. They're AWS, they're GCP, they're multi-cloud. They're on-prem resources, they're hybrid resources, they're operational technologies, maybe IoT and Edge. What do we do with that, about that part of our state? Well, Microsoft says, let's bring in Defender for Cloud. All right, so we have another family of XDR-ish type of services called Defender for Cloud that uh, offers us two things. So it's posture management, and workload protection. All right, that's what Defender for Cloud does. Now, if you are already covering those, like those hybrid multi-cloud resources over there on the right, you know, did you know that Microsoft is among the best platforms to protect those? You know, it's not your grandfather's Microsoft anymore. We don't just care about the Microsoft ecosystem, but you can reach out to AWS, GCP, on-prem, um, and they're really neat technologies that allow us to do that. We can bring those resources in uh, by actually quite easily now connecting to those APIs for those cloud providers and uh, bringing in those resources. And uh, if they're compatible, if those resources are compatible, we can monitor and protect and throw some advanced threat protection that Defender for Cloud gives us uh, to those resources. And finally, like for IoT, we could do that too. Um, we could even protect the uh, the data plane, I'm sorry, the management plane of Azure, for example, and this whole management uh, by monitoring for anomalies there. So it's quite comprehensive. And this is a growing list. These workloads are not, by all means, uh, an exhaustive list of what Defender for Cloud covers these days. So I'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. 
And finally, we should have a sim for logging all of this, both 365 Defender and the family of over there on the right side, Defender for Cloud. And it should be a SOAR as well. So that's orchestration and automation to help us orchestrate and automate those signals that are coming in and do the grunt work for us, right? Now, the traditional definition of XDR from Microsoft might include you know, just the stuff here on the bottom, except the SIM, SIM sort there at the top. But really, these days, we're really considering XDR to be all of these here in the middle, including the SIM SOAR like Sentinel, because it is now very well integrated. And a real XDR should be holistically integrated. It should be a platform, okay, where we don't have to spend a lot of extra energy actually integrating these things. These things just work together. They're designed to work together. A real XDR should holistically correlate all these security signals in your enterprise with a scalable cloud-native, cloud-delivered SIM and SOAR like Sentinel. That is XDR in the Microsoft ecosystem. All right, I'm going to hand it off now to Zach so we can see how this looks like in M365 Defender. All right, let's see how M365 Defender plays a role in XDR. All right, so M365 Defender takes all the signals from all the different Defender components um, and combines those to give us that, that XDR across all of our domains. Um, this, this has a couple different pieces here. So, you know, the combined incident queue. So this is the, the unified incident queue. Um, we're going to take a look at this in a second, um, where all the different products. So Defender for Office, Identity, Endpoint, Security, um, all that combines into our portal and we have a nice unified incident view. Um, so that's, that's really going to be a, a big role. Um, and the overall XDR suite is being able to see, you know, all those insights from all the different products, um, you know, versus going to each individual portal and, and trying to correlate that on your own. We also have the automated response. Um, so this is kind of the, the self self healing feature um, for, you know, your compromised devices or compromised user identities, mailboxes, that kind of thing. Um, so this is where, you know, um, you know, uh, Defender for Endpoint, for instance, right? Um, you know, something happens on the machine, automated investigation response kicks off. Uh, it's able to, to crawl through, you know, thousands of entities on that machine and, you know, remediate uh, fully, um, depending on the configuration, of course. But, you know, we, we have the ability to, um, you know, kind of automate some of this stuff so that it really you know, eases the administrative overhead for for our folks um, we have you know cross product threat hunting so with advanced threat hunting uh, by way of kql we can hunt across the different platforms so if we're wanting to look for uh, you know a specific email <clears throat> or you know look for maybe statistics or something on a an av scan or something in defender for endpoint we can use kql and, and query that uh, do some different things with those queries as well. We also have the threat analytics. So threat analytics, um, it's constantly being updated, gives us really good insight into seeing, um, you know, the latest and greatest threats that are out there. And from there, we can, you know, build different queries, um, custom detections, different things to be on the lookout for, you know, depending on what, um, kind of industry we're in or, or what have you. Um, so some really good insight there on the threat analytics piece. So our different components um, of M365 Defender, you know, we have Defender for Office. This is gonna cover our email. So it's gonna safeguard our email um, against malicious threats, you know, like um, different things. It could be an email, links, so URLs, um, things like that. So it's gonna share signal resulting from any of those kind of activities um, from Defender for Office to M365 Defender. 
Um, another piece there with, with Defender for Office, there's the EOP, so Exchange Online Protection. That's also integrated to give us that end-to-end -end protection for mail and attachments as well. So that's kind of our first piece there. Um, and you see here we have uh, EOP, Exchange Online Protection. This also goes with Azure AD. And then our on-prem integration, which brings us to Defender for Identity. So Defender for Identity is what's going to gather signals from our servers that are running, um, whether it be you know on-prem in, in Active Directory or Domain Services or ADFS. Um, so it's going to take those signals and protect our hybrid environment. So you know we're syncing those identities up. Um, you know we want more insight to see what's happening with those identities on-prem as well as on the in the cloud. Uh, so that's where Defender for Identity comes into play. So it's going to take these signals um, and it's going to look for different attacks across the kill chain. Uh, so, you know, like reconnaissance. So if someone's trying to enumerate some, some usernames or, or groups, something like that, I uh, want to take the next step and try to do, you know, take that information and do lateral movement. This is going to detect and, um, you know, ingest those those alerts and data into Defender so that we can correlate and see you know, where else in the environment they may be trying to move or attack. We have Defender for Endpoint. So this is the EDR solution. Um, so the Endpoint Detection Response. This pairs with Defender Antivirus as well. So the, the Microsoft Next Gen uh, Antivirus, this pairs well together and provides um, you know, our endpoint security solution. So it shares, you know, anything like, like a detection or, um, you know, malware found, things like that. It's going to share that to M365 Defender as well. Um, so, you know, if Mimikatz is found on a machine or, you know, something like that, it's going to report, which would then kind of help us correlate and look at Defender for Identity. Uh, we have cloud app security. So this is going to take signal from our users cloud app usage and ingest that data in here as well. So this is kind of where we can see, um, you know, what people are doing across cloud apps, SaaS apps. Um, there's a really nice integration between Defender for Endpoint and cloud app security where we can take a look at, um, it's, you know, the, the shadow IT, if you will, um, where we can see, you know, hey, why is... Franken Finance uploading 30 gigs of data to Google Drive today. We don't even use Google Drive. So it gives us shadow IT into different events across our SaaS apps as well. And then we have Azure AD Identity Protection. So this is going to take you know, billions of sign-in attempts um, across the globe and uses that data to evaluate the risk of each sign-in to our environment. So this is going to be used by you know, Azure AD, so we can tie this into conditional access and um, you know, depending on risk, we can we can block access. Um, this is a separately licensed product from M365 Defender, so you can you know procure this by having a, an Azure AD Premium P2 license. All right, so this is just kind of uh, this should look kind of similar, familiar from what we looked at earlier. Um, I just like to take this and kind of look down here at just the different kind of products that tie into this. Um, so we have, you know, this is just a, a kind of a simple kill chain um, attack, if you will. So starts off with a phishing email. So our user gets a phishing email. Um, user opens that mail attachment. So it's a malicious attachment. Malware is installed. Attacker gets the user identity. The attacker is then able to move laterally and get data and exfiltrate. So common attack here. These are our tools to help mitigate that. So phishing, we have our, our advanced phishing protection within Defender for Office. Um, open a mail attachment. So we have safe attachments as well. It's going to detonate that attachment in a sandbox. Uh, malware installed. So we have our EDR solution. Um, ton of different features there. You know, um, Block at first sight is a great example. Uh, oftentimes, if you know someone even tries to browse on the web and pull down, um, you know, like a Tor browser or something from from the web, Block at first sight is going to be able to see that it knows, you know, this isn't something that the user should be doing, and it's going to block that download before the the file is even on the device. 
Um, the Fender for Identity. So this is where um, you know it's going to grab those signals from what's happening on prem. So you know maybe the 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 attacker gets a user's identity, and then you know say someone from the help desk has signed in or or stayed signed into that that device, and then the user is able to uh, you know get that hash, do a pass the hash, and then um, you know try to move laterally. So that's you know that's where that signal is going to come in. If the attacker was able to do something like that or you know attempt to pass the hash, we would get alerted on it and be able to respond. And then this kind of after that it kind of bleeds into the the cloud app security realm where um, you know the the, the attacker is able to move laterally and then you know maybe get into that user's um, you know SharePoint OneDrive repository and then exfiltrate you know kind of some more sensitive data from there. So just a you know kind of a simple attack here, but just kind of wanted to illustrate you know how Defender and the different features across that can can help mitigate these kind of things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at an actual incident. All right, so we can see here a bunch of different incidents here. We're going to focus on this one right here, so we can see you know, four different investigation states across multiple categories here. Quite a few. And then if we look at the host here, so we got a couple different endpoints, one being a domain controller. Um, and if what we take a look over here, I wanted to point out the service sources. So this is combining an incident, right? So kind of what we just talked about. It's taking alerts from endpoint, from identity, from Defender for Cloud Apps, from 365, from identity protection, all across the board, and it's correlating this and creating an incident for us. So instead of me going through different portals or responding to different alerts and you know thinking to myself, oh, how could you know how could this kind of be tied to this? I have this done for me. So all I have to do is drill into the alert, or sorry, incident. I drill into the incident and now I have all this information available to me. So I got, you know, right off the bat, we can see the different miter attack tactics, the open alerts, the scopes, so how many devices, users, mailbox. And then I can look at, you know, the top impacted entities. So, you know, it's a couple devices here, domain controller. Here's a user investigator priority here. And I can see the evidence too. So, you know, we're at 91 different entities found. So if I take a look at the alerts, oh, right off the bat, there's you know, malicious credential theft tool, there's Mimikatz, so you know, AV, EDR, so this is coming from the endpoint. It's all suspicious RDP session, activity from a Tor IP address. So Defender for Cloud Apps is telling me that, you know, hey, this this user that's associated with this device logged in with a um, logged into a Tor browser, you know, anonymous browsing session. You know, you should you need to be aware of this. Um, you know, there's some power exploit found. Here's some enumeration. So there's part of the reconnaissance discovery. Some more enumeration. So anomalous count lookups. You know, this is great stuff here, and it's you know all across the board coming from different different detection sources as well. Here's impossible travel, you know, so looking at this one, you know, it's just basically telling me that I couldn't get from, um, you know, Denmark to the U.S. in a matter of 144 minutes. Uh, so it's, you know, saying, hey, this is impossible. Let's look into this. Um, so here's creation of forwarding redirect rules. So this is coming from, you know, um, Defender for Office. So it's letting me know, hey, you know, there's a forwarding rule created in the midst of all this craziness that was happening on the machine and with this user. You know, we need to go check that. Um, keep going here. So you can see, you know, this a lot of stuff here, a lot of things happening. Um, you know, a lot of good stuff coming from different alerting sources. I can go over here to my devices, see how many devices or which devices were involved. I get some details there. I can look at my users. So the admin account, there's my account, dig it in there, mailboxes. So it's going to tell me 
you know, so now it's telling me out of these two accounts or these two users, I have a mailbox associated with one of them. So, you know, I want to look into that. Here's the different apps. So the different kind of apps it saw there. So alerts in 365 and exchange online. And then here's that self-healing feature, um, the automated investigation response. So here's telling me, you know, malware was prevented. And in fact, when I was running this lab, I was actually having a tough time keeping Mimikatz on the machine. Um, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't step away for very long because uh, automated investigation would come in and remove it, <laughs> you know, while I was trying to test. In fact, I was, I was in the middle of doing a pass the hash, and uh, you know, AIR came in and and removed Mimikatz, you know, while I was mid attack. So it works very well. Um, each one of these, so if I just kind of drill into the first one here, each one of these is going to give us, you know, a nice incident graph. So it's going to break it down for us, paint a picture as to, you know, which device we're talking through, the alert that kind of initiated this entire thing, uh, the different entities analyzed. So you see here, 3,700 entities in an hour. Um, if I look back to whenever I was an analyst, I, I couldn't do that in an hour um, thoroughly. So great, uh, it's a great feature. Again, take some administrative overhead off your plate. Um, and then from here, so we can dig into the alerts. So the alerts that are specific to this um, automated investigation. So you can see here, Mimikatz, the device. So um, that's my domain controller we we're looking at earlier. Here's the evidence. So here's gonna be the suspicious entities that were investigated. And then it's gonna tell us which ones were mediated. So you can see here, uh, a lot of Mimikatz were mediated. You can see multiple from where I was trying to, um, you know, keep, keep my attack going um, and then you know a lot there's one that's prevented but most of these were mediated um, and just a just a note there I I did turn off the AV on these machines so I could get Mimikatz on the machine but it kept turning itself back on <laughs> um, here's my entities so here's where I can look at you know all the different things that were submitted for evidence um, so it's not just, you know, you can look at the evidence that's going to tell you the nasty stuff, but you can also see everything that's in here as well as part of the investigation. And then you can go to the log and see just what the investigation did. So a lot of good stuff here. Um, this is all part of the, you know, automated investigation self healing feature, um, the self healing feature. So, as you can see, there's a ton of capability in here. Um, this all correlates nicely together. You know, it really helps from a, an analyst or, or an engineer perspective to have, you know, all these different detection sources reporting in. Um, so that's gonna wrap it up for Microsoft 365 Defender and its portion of XDR. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to Jeff so he can go through all the awesome capabilities of Defender for Cloud. So thanks, thanks everyone for coming today and hope you pick something up. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Zach. So we just saw Zach illustrate how M365 Defender can kind of cover these areas in our attack chain. Well, what about the rest of it? What about Defender for Cloud? What about, say, that bottom part there? We're trying to figure out what's going on with the servers in this attack. Well, let's take a look at Defender for Cloud. So Defender for Cloud is, uh, again, security posture management and workload protection, OK? Uh, this is the overview. And uh, security posture is uh, easily accessed through this little blade here. Um, right now, we're only looking at a 70% score. It's pretty low. Um, it's just kind of giving us an overall security posture uh, idea of what's going on. Now, uh, I only have one subscription on this, but you could do many subscriptions, or you could uh, attach posture management uh, by management groups in the Azure, if you like to add members that way. Let's go back to the overview. And uh, down here is another type of 
security posture management, regulatory compliance, you know. This is where we could bring in industry control compliance, uh, such as like SOC TSP, PCI DSS, uh, and some others. Let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, this is kind of our overall score right now in this environment, one subscription. Uh, SOC TSPs, kind of one out of 13 items that we could uh, go tack there and so forth. By the way, Microsoft gives you for free. They just can turn that on. There's nothing you have to go do. It's just on. Uh, and they will uh, give you the Azure Security Benchmark uh, for free. And uh, it's kind of a collection of policies that uh, Microsoft decided to correlate together to uh, offer customers for free. So down here, if we scroll down a little bit, I'm looking at Azure Security Benchmark V3. So if we take a look at, hey, uh, what are you telling me here? I could expand everything. And uh, it gives us some recommendations on, uh, you know, for example, virtual machines. So we've got uh, three of three virtual machines that have failed this policy check. So this one's about network ports should uh, not allow uh, uh, access to these servers. Um, and they give you a description here and so forth. So uh, just generally what we're looking at here is a kind of a regulatory compliance perspective on posture management. All right, so let's go back and let's take a look at Defender for Cloud's uh, other features here. This one's kind of nice. Um, inventory is telling us, hey, what am I covering? Uh, in this case, we've got some Azure resources. We also have some on-prem resources here. Like, uh, Chaos DC uh, is an on-prem resource. We could kind of take a look at how it's connected. Uh, for example, like this one right here, which happens to be a Windows uh, on-prem box, uh, is not reporting in to Defender for Cloud. That's okay, we're probably covering that with MDE. Um, let's say Cause Chaos Adicon here is installed, and that is an ARC-connected resource. So like those on-prem resources, um, the provisioning that Defender for Cloud does is it uses that technology called Azure Arc, and uh, it, can re it can reach out to those resources like a, a server and, uh, and add them to the Azure Resource Manager so that they could come under management for security protection like Defender for Cloud. So we'll take a look at Adicon here, and I could actually drill into Adicon here a little bit more and get uh, some more information about it. Like here are some current uh, recommendations for just that uh, on-prem machine. And then over here, uh, I currently don't have any alerts coming in to Defender for Cloud from that not yet. Uh, and we could also look at installed applications and so forth. So lots of uh, useful information. here. Let's go back to inventory. Um, and you could quickly see over here on the right in this column where we've got a few things we got to look at in the green means, okay, that's good, and so forth and so on. So that corresponds to those recommendations for each item there. So let's take a look at uh, workload protections. So workload protections in Defender for Cloud, it's pretty straightforward. We're looking at all these uh, protections, let me hop over to this and drill into, uh, sorry, go back one. And let's take a look at the subscription. And here are my plans. This is where I kind of throw the major switch. So for this Azure subscription, like I could pull in on-prem or AWS resources into, let's say a resource group that I've created for those, um, different hybrid or on uh, multi-cloud resources. Um, and they just become resources in ARM or Azure Resource Manager. Then I could tell Defender for Cloud, hey, go out and uh, go apply protections to those uh, 
and that's called a defender plant. So this is where we kind of throw those things on. Um, then, uh, then we could get that protection from there. So I just want to show that real quick on how that's configured. Uh, so let's go take a look at those workload protections here. This is kind of the dashboard for workload protections. Let me just real quick. Um, so we're looking pretty good. Here's different types, you know, key vault is covered, containers are covered, storage is covered, and so forth. You get a kind of quick uh, view of how you're covered with those workload protections. Down here at the bottom, though, they give you a quick uh, summary of uh, any uh, advanced protection that might be uh, needing some attention. So it's telling here that I've got six unprotected VMs that uh, really need to have some kind of vulnerability assessment added to them. And yes, Microsoft does offer vulnerability assessment. In case you didn't know that. So, um, and it's pretty good. So this is just a real quick, you know, overview of workload protection. Um, over here, you get some you know, summaries of what's going on, like the most prevalent security alerts center for cloud and resources that seem to be the most attacked uh, and uh, some other summary items down there. Uh, Cause Utility seems to have a lot of stuff reporting into uh, Defender for Cloud. So let's take a look at that. Now we're getting into the alerts of Defender for Cloud. And uh, let's take a look at this one here. This is a high severity uh, saying Nimicats is running on its utility server. Uh, gives a little summary over here in this blade. Uh, and let's go take a look at the full details. Well, that's interesting. So here's some integration between Defender for Cloud or on the right side of our XDR diagram that we saw earlier in the beginning of this presentation. And, um, and Zach covered the M365 Defender features. Hey, these, these are actually kind of working with each other. That's nice. There's some mini, I really didn't really have to do much to get that to work. Um, so it's uh, basically saying that uh, Defender for Endpoint is uh, kind of integrated with Defender for Cloud here. And if I uh, expand this, I could get an idea of what's going on here. Yeah, I've got a tool here with that uh, categorization hack tool, and uh, it detected uh, Mimi DRV.sys, which, which is Mimi Cats. So, like uh, Zach said earlier, um, M365 Defender actually took automatic action on that. It was really tough for him to get that thing to stay active long enough to simulate a, a real attack. But uh, uh, here, here's kind of what it looks like uh, for an example, what it looks like over in Defender and uh, illustrating that XDR-like type of integration. So, Defender for Cloud is really starting to paint this integrated, correlated, contextualized XDR picture for us, right? Um, we saw some of those integrations there. And Zach showed us, you know, what's going on over here in the 365 side over here on the left. And we had some integrations here that we saw between MDE, sorry, Defender for Endpoint, the EDR solution from Microsoft as part of 365 Defender and Defender for Cloud. So, you know, here we go. We've got, you know, integrations actually happening in this level here. And then Defender for Cloud, of course, is protecting our workloads over on the right that may or may not be, say, the system of Microsoft. Yeah, like that on-prem resource that we saw. But what about Sentinel? What about this guy at the top? Uh, what do we get? Let me take a look at that. Well, let's talk about Sentinel a little bit here. Um, you know, again, Microsoft did not buy it. They could have gone out and acquired a company. Um, but they didn't see anything that met their needs. They got together and said, there's got to be a better way to do incident and event management. 
it just wasn't out there. Um, it had to be a cloud native scalable modern with a, a tremendous amount of automation and AI capability. That, those are literally the words of Ann Johnson as the CVP of Microsoft years ago when Sentinel was uh, brought in as a uh, project that they wanted to uh, start. So they started from scratch. They built it. So traditional SIMs were great at logging primarily to satisfy compliance, but we had to go more than that. They reimagined the SIM SOAR tool to introduce a new platform providing intelligent security analytics at cloud scale for the entire IT estate, the entire enterprise. So it's easier to collect signals across your whole organization or hybrid multi-cloud from devices, users, apps, servers, any cloud. It uses the power of artificial intelligence, automation, ML here, um, multi-cloud. Uh, and, uh, you know, you might think this might be expensive, but really Sentinel is only charging you for the storage that you use. And a couple other things. Um, it's quite cost effective compared to other solutions. So for, exist, uh, for example, most of our clients uh, will actually reserve capacity. They won't necessarily pay the full retail price, pay as you go, so to speak. Um, but they'll say, hey, we, and something a Patriot helps our clients do is anticipate the, the ingestion rate of all their data sources and uh, estimate what reserve capacity. Uh, you could go to Microsoft and get really, really big discounts, of course, from the full price. And then uh, you could change that monthly. So that's kind of nice. Um, hey, what if I start ingesting a lot more data than I thought I would? Will I get penalized? Nope. Will it shut me down? Nope. It will just charge you for that extra data at that rate. So then you just go to Microsoft and say, hey, we're, we pulled in some more data sources or, uh, and then just up your reserve uh, capacity. Very manageable there. Um, that's a nice thing, I think. Uh, again, limitless cloud speed and scale, providing actionable feedback. Uh, key things there, they were. The thing I really like as kind of a DevSecOps guy, um, you know, that passion that I have is a rich ecosystem of integrations, um, especially with Microsoft Defender, as we saw before. But one of the cool things you could do with Sentinel is because, uh, you know, there's so many uh, tools and, and uh, repositories out there in the community that we can use. You could bring in code and uh, deploy, say, playbooks and various other content, as we call it, in Sentinel by just connecting Sentinel to a repo. And then you could manage all of that stuff by just DevOpsing, so to speak, your repo. That's pretty cool. So, um, again, you know, collect over 100, uh, 123 plus now um data sources and you could pretty much collect anything you know syslog ceph you could create your own say you've got some weird thing that has an api maybe uh you could create a connector and uh, uh ingest that data into sentinel and sentinel will normalize that for you of course so um it detects uh, does a great job of detecting uh threats of course with Advanced analytics, you can do hunting, uses uh, KQL or Gusto query language um, for you know, running queries and so forth. So very common language to use these days. Um, you could ingest, uh, not ingest, but connect uh, Microsoft Threat Intelligence, which is quite good, but you can uh, bring in threat intelligence from any other source, taxi sources and so forth quite easily into to Sentinel. Um, we won't have time to actually, uh, you know, show all these things. Sentinel itself is really a large ecosystem. But... And then, uh, of course, you could investigate, you know, create incidents and uh, have those guided by AI. Uh, no, it's not all canned. You could add uh, models that uh, just uh, help you uh, get through things uh, via AI. Then finally, you could respond. Uh, you know, the sore part of Sentinel is the uh, orchestration and automation. 
So uh, you could really automate uh, a lot of these things. The favorite way to do that is use Logic Apps and uh, in Azure. So uh, again, built from scratch, did not buy it. They didn't go out and acquire and try to glue different companies together. And they started from scratch and uh, kind of reimagined the whole SIM SOAR picture here. So let's uh, let's dive into Sentinel. So here's Sentinel. This is kind of the landing page dashboard overview of Sentinel. Uh, we can see here in this environment, uh, our sim is ingesting the last 40 years, almost uh, 170,000 events. Uh, not a really big, you know, busy. This is a lab test environment, demo environment for us. Um, we have some KPIs here. You know, we have some decreased rate in uh, ingestion of events. Uh, we've got steady 18 alerts, 120 incidents generated, and uh, we've got a, a quick little bar graph here. Let me collapse this real quick so it looks prettier on this on small screen. Uh, so I've got two that are active and 118 that are not. So I've got to get busy here. I could see here in this quick uh, bar graph, uh, sorry, line graph here with some bars under it that something happened on this day. Uh, and just like this, I could go instantly to Gusto query language and start uh, tweaking my raw data, uh, my queries for raw data that is to get, get an idea of what's going on here. So you'll see that KQL is very easily accessible in many different places in Sentinel. So back to the graph here. Down here, if we had any uh, IP addresses that uh, were kind of known to be uh, on the threat intelligence uh, list and are geolocatable, so to speak. Uh, they'll actually appear here. And our data, we don't have any of that right now. So this is blank, but you'll see a heat map of activity here. Um, what else do we have here? Let me collapse that again. Um, so some recent instance, um, you know, one of the things that we've been talking about is this credential theft. So we'll dive into that in a second, but uh, a little quick tour about what's going on here. We get a quick uh, view of kind of what uh, some of our data source anomalies. So it's seeing that we have unusual high spikes of activities that are happening uh, in that graph. So like device image load events, um, is one data source that is saying, hey, we had a spike here, what's going on? Uh, and then I could click on that, of course, and you got it, get some KQL, look at that raw data. So, so yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so let's take a look at what's going on in this environment. So how about we dive into this incident here? Yeah, Sentinel actually created this incident automatically. It looked at signals that are coming in across the landscape. So in this case, we had uh, Fusion, the uh, marketing term for the AIML image, the engine, sorry, that Sentinel uses to uh, correlate and contextualize and all that good stuff. Uh, it found these two products. So we had some stuff coming in from MDE there, EDR from Microsoft. And then AAD's identity protection as well. So that's kind of interesting. We have two alerts over here this is our timeline. What's going on? We have a quick look of what the entities are. I could go over here and get more details about those entities. Um, and then uh, some uh, more information that's going on here, like what was the analytics rule that really, if I don't think something's going on here, I could really dive into the uh, fusion analytics rule here again. Advanced analytics. This is not some kind of fancy query that returns something. This is AIML really kind of putting things together and uh, creating this uh, this alert. So you could actually go into that from that hyperlink there. Back to the incident. Um, it's a high severity. It's active. It's signed to me. I gotta get busy on this. Um, and if I go into some of these alerts, I get some more information over here about the alert and there's some remediation steps. Uh, but to get like, a really good uh, idea of what's going on here, um, I could take a look at 
some investigation that can start up. So uh, Sentinel will give me a kind of an overview of what are the activities uh, across the uh, entities that are involved in this incident. So let me get that timeline back up. It's pretty simple. I just have two alerts in this one. Uh, at 1.34, we had anonymous IP address. So you could see, you know, if I click on that or hover over it, I could see that kind of medium severity uh, incident, I'm sorry, not incident, but alert that's uh, kind of started the initial uh, access. So it looks like it was targeting, let me zoom in here a little bit, Jeff L at uh, Chaos Defense. Uh, that's our UPN for our, our, our uh, user that uh, seems to be kind of the bridge between the initial access and then looks like we had some additional activity uh, that's all really kind of centered around Mimicats. Um, all right. And all of this together kind of correlates into this malicious credential theft here. So here's our alert over here. And then I can uh, look at each one of these details and see if I get any other information. Is there anything else going on, weak sauce? Um, so let's say there are 67 other related events, or I'm sorry, alerts. So let's go take a look at that. And here we go. We got KQL again. We can go get that data and take a, a look at the raw data that's going on. Here's all my alert names that are going on. Um, and I could take a look at kind of the progression of detailed activity that happened there straight out of that, uh, that graph. So that's kind of cool. Um, so that's a quick uh, overview of an incident that uh, brings together two things um, in our XDR environment, uh, Defender for Endpoint and Active Directory Endpoint Protection. So let me show you real quick uh, a little bit more about this environment and uh, where's this data coming from? So we really don't have a whole lot of time to go through a lot of this here. Like this is kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, You can take a look at the data in different ways. This is preview, um, but I uh, think that if you're kind of a MITRE attack model oriented, um, you can look at things this way. Now this is not a very exciting environment as you can see except well, this one kind of sticks out here. And you could see that this is our credential access that we could take a look at a little earlier there. Um, so just a different way to look at the same data. How do we get uh, data into this? So let's take a look at data connectors real quick. Um, first thing I see here is uh, all of these different ready to go data connectors that Microsoft gives us. 23 right now and growing. Um, I could bring in things from Fortinet. I could bring in things from Infoblox, Juniper, uh, of course, a bunch of Microsoft products, uh, Oracle, Proofpoint, and so forth. Quite a few different things are just kind of ready to go. Let me show you what this environment has. All I have to do is just kind of change this query and say, hey, you know, I've got 13 right now in this environment connected. So I'm, uh, you know, gathering data uh, from all these connectors here. Super easy to connect all this. So I could go out here and take a look at that connector in detail uh, and uh, kind of configure it here. So I got audit logs, non-interactive user sign-in. Maybe I want to get that service principal sign-in and then apply changes. And I could get a quick overview of what that data, just that data connector has been doing over uh, time. So uh, yeah, we got a little spike here. We went from uh, around 125 or so and suddenly went up to 200 and then back down to kind of normal levels. Something happened. And we saw that in the, uh, the previous. Uh, and we could also bring in some uh, new signals like uh, risky service principles that are coming in from identity protection, risky users, uh, user risk events, uh, and let's say managed identities was the Azure thing. Um, we could uh, actually track that too. So let's just go ahead and add that. And as easy as that, I can actually 
just add um, data ingestion to my environment. So, uh, so that's a quick overview of uh, Sentinel and how it can actually connect different things in XDR. So thank you very much for taking a little bit of time today to do a whirlwind tour of XDR in the Microsoft security ecosystem. I hope you learned uh, a few things there and uh, reach out to us if you are interested in completing your XDR strategy. Thanks again.